Welcome to the BlueCat MB5 Dynamics plugin tutorial by Streamworks Audio. BlueCat's MB5 Dynamics is an extremely powerful all-in-one multiband dynamics processor. It can be used as a multiband compressor, limiter, gate, expander, wave shaper, or all combined at once on any part of the audio spectrum. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using Cubase but the fundamentals are the same regardless of your digital audio workstation. With the increasingly higher track counts that we're able to achieve as our technology progresses, it becomes more and more important to control the dynamics of the individual tracks and the frequency spectrum of the individual instruments. The BlueCat Audio MB5 is the perfect multiband dynamics processor for solving virtually any dynamics problems that might occur in any given type of music production. In modern mixing with advanced tools like the MB5, you can often save a recording that might otherwise seem unsalvageable. Often in a live off-the-floor situation, musicians interact with each other in a way that might make them play more aggressively or louder than they did during the sound check. Short of leaving a responsible amount of headroom, there's no way of predicting the performer's ability to alter their timbre or sonic contribution to the mix. Sometimes these unruly takes can be the best performance, and if it's up to you to save the recording, you'd better have a set of tools that can do the job. In this particular example, I have an off-the-floor recording with reasonably good isolation on the mics, but towards the end of the song in a heavy part that I've highlighted here, the drummer slams on the kick pedal with such increasing intensity that the plastic beater, which he insisted on using, starts to make an annoying clicky sound that sticks out way too much in the mix. While the low frequencies seem consistent, the highs go way out of control at the end. If we try to EQ the click sound out of the kick, we lose the attack part of the sound during softer passages. So the only solution is to control that specific band that the click resides in. Listen to the high frequency on the kick drum here as it seems to ramp up over time. Now this would otherwise ruin a recording, but this will be a quick fix with the MB5 Dynamics plugin. Before we dig right in, I'm going to give you the most basic tour of the interface. There's the master section, with pre-gain control, wet-dry balance, a master limiter for the output, and a post-gain control. In the main graph display, you can control the levels of the individual bands, set crossover points, and zoom in if necessary. Any changes you make to the crossover will be displayed numerically below, where you can also make changes and set the slope of the crossover. The next area displays the selected frequency band's dynamic and envelope controls, link settings, a handy copy-paste section where you can copy the dynamic settings from one band to another, and the monitoring section. We can see in the main graph display that there are five bands of dynamic control. You can add or remove bands from the plugin just above the master section. You can switch between the bands by simply selecting them on the graph, or you can click the left and right arrows next to the band number. Any changes you make with the bands can be reset by clicking here. There are two dynamic curves that you can set with the knobs. Depending on the threshold and ratio settings, they can be compressors, limiters, expanders, or more but I'll get into that in a little bit. While you're making adjustments, you might need to zoom in on a specific frequency. Simply drag select the area and the display zooms in. Hit Alt or Option and click the graph to zoom out. One last point of interest before we begin to solve the kick drum problem that I showed you earlier is that if you wish to see the activity on your DAW while working with the plugin, you can set the opacity of the window with the control on the top right. Cool. Now that we've covered enough basics, it's time to fix that kick drum. Now I know I'm pinning the kick in the bass right now, but this is to emphasize what I'm doing for learning purposes. I want to hear how the kick fits in with the bass and percussion mostly, so I'm going to mute the other groups for now. First I'm going to load up an instance of Blue Cat's MB5 Dynamics as an insert on the kick channel. The default is three dynamic bands of control, but you can of course add or subtract a band here. Band 4 happens to be in the frequency range that I'm looking for to get that click under control. 
If I want to, I can change the crossover point to extend or narrow the band, or click and zoom in to get it just right. But I'm pretty sure we have the offending frequency range in sight. You'll notice that as I adjust the threshold on the upper curve, the behavior is duplicated in the monitor section, where you can see exactly where the compressor kicks in. Just so I don't take for granted what you know about the monitoring section and how it relates to the dynamic section, I'm going to break it down. Click on the number above the band to select it in the dynamic section and main graph display. When you click on a band in this section, it will be underlined like the fourth band in this case. Each band can be soloed, muted, or bypassed. The level meters display input and output levels and the amount of compression or expansion that you introduce to each band. The output stage does not show makeup gain, so you can clearly see the effect of compression or expansion. Any dynamics changes will be shown in red for gain reduction and green for gain increase. You can adjust the threshold for the upper curve in pink and the lower curve in blue. If I adjust the ratio towards compression, I can gradually dial between the compression and limiting. Or if I want, I can use the upper band for hard compression or limiting and the lower band for light compression. You can see the dynamic reduction in the same display as the frequency response to make sure you're hitting your target frequency. I'm going to make a weird adjustment here, just so you can clearly see the down and up threshold in the display. Now that I've got the specific frequency range of the click under control, I'm going to bring the overall level of the treated band down to fit back into the kick sound and maybe take a little bit more of the highs with it. All right, now let's just hear the passage in context again. Not bad. The highs are under control and they don't seem to change too much over time. Well, that's it for the basics of getting creative control over your dynamics. We'll touch on a problem with the bass in this mix in the next chapter.